So the upgrade begins for the Frey e-bike and uh, so I'll start with what the new parts are that just came in. I got the Bafang 510. So it's a thousand watt motor with about 160 newton meters of torque. So at least double the torque of my old one and, and basically four times the wattage. So I guess wattage would be like horsepower and torque is like torque. So double the torque at least and almost four times the horsepower of my old motor. And uh, so that's going to the bike. All the little bits and pieces it comes with. Little uh, control. This is basically kind of like the controller on the screen. I've also got a few other parts I'm going to put on while I'm doing the upgrade. So a new seat, carbon fiber seat, carbon fiber bar. Okay. Um, some beefier grips. The grips I had are fine. Um, they're just not as thick. I like these. are nice, a little more spongy and thicker. And while I'm putting it on, some of the parts that came with the kit, obviously the gear, front gear sprocket. It's a little taller, which I'll probably need with the new motor because... I'm going to have a higher top end speed and I'm already getting pretty close going down a hill. I'm, you know, going as fast as I can pedal already. So that'll come in, in nicely. I got some new, um, some new pedals and those are the cranks that came with the kit. Bunch of cabling and wires and all sorts of stuff, which I won't really need because I've already got the Bafang wires and everything uh, that, that are pretty much already integrated into the bike. So yeah, I'll be just doing some little video here and there while I'm doing the upgrading. Um, just to kind of show you the progress and then hopefully the final result from this video will be with a completed bike. All right, so I'm starting here with the removal of the motor. I take the back tire off because I got to uh, put this sensor back. I had moved the sensor up onto, basically onto, um, put a magnet on here. You can kind of see I put a magnet on the crank to bypass the speed sensor so that I wouldn't have the motor cutting out, um, I could basically just go as fast as I want with the motor helping me. But I gotta take this bit here and I gotta move it actually the sensor back and put it back over here so that it lines up with the with the um, basically the magnet that's on the spokes. And of course take this motor completely right out. The Bafang motor, the M500. Alright, so here we go. Well, we got the motor out. It took a little bit of work, but we got the motor out. So now we're going to, uh, I might have to do one rewire because one of the wires, uh, I think I just need to replace it because I, I want to be able to hook in. It's one that goes from here right to the controller. And I want to be able to actually shorten it so that I can unplug the controller and do some reprogramming on the top without having to get to the motor to do it. So I'm going to probably play around with that, but I want to show you the difference in size of these uh, actual motors it's like crazy night and day so here's the back obviously the the old ones is this one here and i just left the uh, sprocket on it but you can see just night and day size wise so I'll try and let you see i'm not trying to deceive you in any way just show you the crazy difference in size so yeah pretty pretty outrageous so it's actually been a week since I made that last video with the motor out or that portion of the video for this mod update and uh, as you can see it's looking a little different. I had to take this adapter plate that I bought, luckily I bought it when I bought the, wasn't sure if I needed it, I didn't really know what it was all about but when I got the motor out and tried to put the new motor in I realized really quickly that this motor is not going to fit in the, basically in the plate assembly. So. You can see here, that's part of the old one, and you can see how everything, even the way the bolts line up, they're much narrower on the old one. This is the old bit, and I had to put this adapter plate in to get the new motor in. And you can even see here that um, the bolts don't line up either. They're in different positions, so this one's more flat on the, it's flat on the bottom. It's a little flatter here. Whereas this one kind of arcs more. You can see how they kind of arc. And this kind of goes flat. And they're totally different spacings as well. This is more centered, whereas this is more towards this hole here. So these motors are, you know, radically different sizes, different bolt patterns. And so I had to take this in to a shop and get them to weld this bracket in so the motor will stay in place. So I'm gonna be putting this, uh, Got to do a little bit of drilling. I got to drill 
there's a hole back here already to get through the back. I need to drill one here to get to the top tube and one here to get to the battery area to run the cables. So, and then I gotta clean it, sand it, paint it, and then I can put the motor in. So much fun. All right, so we've got the bracket all painted up. Got a little bit of polishing to smooth out that seam there because that's old paint versus the new paint. So we'll do a little, later on I'll do some, probably some wet sanding just between the two sections there. Polish up the new stuff and blend the two. But it's all painted, got my wires all run. So I've got the dropper post. I made, put all the holes in there. And uh, yeah, running all the wires back. Everything has to be run kind of through that midsection inside. And so now let's see if we can get this motor in. That's going to be, it's tight. I know it's going to be tight. A lot of banging is going to be going on here. So hopefully uh, the next video you see, the motor will be installed. Maybe not running, but installed. Well, there is the motor in. Everything spins. It actually works, which is pretty amazing. Yeah. So now we're going to tackle the top here. I'm replacing the bars. I'm going to have to reposition everything but that's the way it goes so we'll do that next i know the last video was me showing you the motor and the bike and super excited and saying it was all working and then i was just going to do the bars and get that all sorted out well as you can see the motor is not in the bike uh, i made a little boo-boo i went to ride it and it just kind of stopped i think when any just a little bit of amperage went through it it just died and that's because when you put all the wires underneath the motor, when you mount it and everything, you gotta be really careful. You don't, uh, when you put the cover plate on, you don't put a screw through the wires and short it out. And that's what I did. I put a screw through one of the wires and I shorted it out and I ended up shorting out something on the controller plate. So here's the old controller plate. It's a part, it's like a whole plate, the outside plate of the motor. And then you've got this controller inside. And so that, this piece here, this blue board, is the board that something happened. And so I've replaced it. <coughs> I've checked it out. It does work now. Uh, I'm just gonna, I just basically put it on temporarily. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm just getting over the COVID. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna hopefully try this again. So let's see what happens. So the saga continues. Mike, why do you have two motors? What is going on? Two Bafang motors. And this thing called the best tool. So I thought that this motor, this is the old one. I thought I had it working. Everything seemed to work when I turned the screen on and it all looked like everything was working. But when I went to actually hit the throttle and make the motor turn, this little, uh, this is where the cranks would attach to, nothing happened. It would kind of jitter a little bit sometimes, but it really wouldn't turn. And so during my research to find out what was wrong, I discovered that you need to calibrate the controller when you when you replace a controller with the motor, it needs to be calibrated. So all my research led to me having to buy this thing called the best tool from Bafang, which uh, for most motors allows you to calibrate them through software on a, on a PC. So you connect it to your PC and uh, if everything goes right, you uh, load the software up and there's a calibration tool on the controller page and boom, Bob's your uncle. You've calibrated your motor and now everything works. After trying all kinds of different versions of the software and scouring the internet, uh, trying to figure out why it wasn't happening for me, why the calibration option wasn't there in the software. I thought maybe it was an account privilege thing, got a higher access account, didn't work. Talked to Bafang uh, or emailed Nobody could help me. So I decided, you know what, I, I just, it's been like a month since the last video that I, you would have just seen, it's been over a month. And so I said, I'm just gonna buy a new motor. I'm done, I gotta get this thing running. My bike's sitting there. So I bought a new motor. While the motor was coming, uh, I did get a hold of Bafang. Bafang actually had a tech reach out to me and at least from what we understand, I'm not gonna say it's for sure thing, but apparently this motor doesn't work with the best tool. The best tool for some reason doesn't allow me to calibrate this motor. The only way to calibrate this, he called it a special motor, don't know why, is to use a certain LCD screen that I don't have called the C961 Bafang screen. 
which has a calibration option for this motor, the 510 or ultra motor. And so he is actually sending me that screen. So there is hope that this motor will work one day. So I might have two working motors um, if that is the case. So this one's going in hopefully today and I'm gonna hopefully be able to show you a running bike today. Well, you're gonna see this video and it'll be on this video. For me, it hopefully will be today, <laughs> fingers crossed. Um, but I might have another motor operational that I could maybe either, I don't know, just keep for a second motor just in case. They're pretty expensive though, so I'm probably gonna just sell it because it's it's worth a lot of money. It's like a thousand dollar motor shipped with you know with all the little extras that come with it and everything. So they're not cheap. So hopefully the next part of this video, you'll see it in the bike. All right, so the mighty Bafang Ultra Motor is now officially all in and it's working. This is the next day, but uh, I did take it for a little quick ride after I got everything kind of going um, since then I have adjusted my derailleur because I did have to re I did had to sort of disconnect it temporarily while I was doing some stuff so I might need to tweak that a little bit you'll notice I also have two magnets one there and one there so I found out through programming that if you have two magnets you get better sensing of the back wheel rotation so you get more uh, so you get better speeds more accurate speed readings um, it'll be because you're getting twice as many signals and it also registers when the wheel's coming around more often. So when you start pedaling, it just helps with regulating the speed and the power and the torque and everything. So that's a cool thing. And I also um, reprogrammed the motor for something called a soft tune. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. These Bafang motors, they're pretty powerful and they can be a little rough. So they can be a little bit off and onish, and they seem to be a little, can be a little aggressive and maybe not come off. Like when you stop pedaling them quick, quite as quickly, but you can program all of that um, through uh, programming and adjust it completely for you know how it matches your pedaling aggressiveness everything so I use this thing called a soft tune and followed basically the uh, all the settings in that I just replicated them and saved it to the motor so it should make the motor a little bit uh, just essentially it's softer so it just doesn't feel so aggressive all the time because sometimes you tr you're coming out of a corner and you pedal and all of a sudden you just get this boost of power that you're not expecting and it can send you off course so you you want to be able to have it matching your pedaling and if you don't want it too hard or too aggressive all at once you can do that so we're gonna take it for a quick spin uh hopefully everything goes well i'm not gonna ride it too hard i'm just gonna you know, make sure everything's working and you know and uh, get home safe, I guess you could say, and just see what kind of speeds we get and different things and how the shifting is if I need to adjust the driller and everything and make sure everything's working properly. So I may make another little quick video when I get back to let you know how the ride went. All right, I'm back from the ride, cleaned the bike up again. Um, she put it on my new seat here because I'm not gonna be riding for a couple days. Hopefully everything's feeling good again. I actually came with these glasses. So didn't wear them today, but came with the glasses, kind of cool. Yeah, everything went really good. Um, the tune felt really good. I would, the only thing I would have to say is right when you start off, like if you're just starting off, you haven't pedaled, you're not even going any speed at all, like you're not even one or two miles an hour. Um, it's almost like the pedal assist doesn't kick in right away, but you could hit the throttle just to get a little momentum. But as soon as you're riding, and even when you slow down, once you're riding and you're going, then it seems to kick in right away, even if you're going like one or two miles an hour and you've slowed down and sped up again. So yeah, it's just that initial get go seemed a little like there wasn't anything there, but then it's go time and it's really smooth. When I back off, um, basically when I back off pedaling, like when you're switching gears before, it would kind of the power to the motor, the power to the gears and basically the power from the motor would would be too much and you'd be like hitting gears really hard. So you could, you know, you could break teeth and potentially break your chain. So um, it's all really good. I was getting a little bit of skipping on my, basically on my um, tallest gear. So when I was in my tallest gear going fast. And so I, just, I might have to do a little bit of derailleur adjustments. I did make a little tweak just when I got home. So that might, might have fixed it. If not, I got to do a little bit of derailleur adjustments. That's it. Everything was working good. 30 miles an hour, pretty much can do that all day on this bike with just a little bit of pedaling um, at the top there. It'll probably do like without any pedaling easily 28 miles an hour all day long. You know, give it a little extra and you get up and over 30, maybe 32, 33. So that's like 50 kilometers an hour. It's pretty fast. All right. I think that wraps up this video. The next video I make for the fray will probably be, be me riding it. All right. Thanks for watching.